Hi guys, Unit 1, Lesson 2, Part B, Solving Inequalities. So our main objective here for language objectives is to describe real-world situations that can be modeled by an inequality, and write and solve the inequality. So again, inequalities, just a simple little example, is basically saying, well, $5 is more than $1. And that's the general consensus. Uh, even animals understand um, quantities or inequalities with uh, food. They know that a, uh, you know, two lambs would be, you know, uh, more food than one lamb. So that's something a lion would be aware of. Um, just a habit of survival, I guess. Now, if you really wanted to solve for inequalities, you would say something like this. Well, in this situation, um, you have to make more than a certain amount. And let's say you use the division property, and you basically say, well, I have to get more than one. So that means you're trying to satisfy something. Um, it depends on context, depends on the situation. But again, you're still using the properties of equality to find your solution. The only difference now is instead of equality, we have inequality. And we're going to get into the types that exist right now. So what is an inequality? An inequality is a statement that compares two expressions that are not strictly equal by using one of the following uh, inequality signs. So the first one on the inequality sign is less than. For example, 3 is less than 5. That's a true statement. All right, the next one is less than or equal to 5. So basically, you would probably say uh, for a true statement, 5 is, actually this would not actually work, um, but an expression, we would pronounce it, is less than or equal to. So let me erase that, because true statement in the sense of numerical values becomes different. All right, uh, the next one is greater than, so 5 is greater than 3, that's true. And then the next example, this is greater than or equal to, so notice the or equal to's have the line at the bottom, okay? So the line at the bottom, line at the bottom. Now, this one right here does not equal. So a good example of that, five does not equal three, okay? All right, example one of the distributive property. So the distributive property, and I think you've seen this before, it just means that, well, you're going to go ahead and distribute whatever number represented by A, to everything inside the parentheses. So A times B will happen, plus A times C will happen. So let's look at example one, all right? So our, our parentheses are there, and the coefficient way out in the front that we have to distribute is five. So five times two, that's 10, don't forget the X. Five times four is 20. So that's an example of a distributive property. Example two, same deal. The only difference is a fraction. Don't panic, same idea. We're gonna go ahead and distribute the one fourth. Now, if you do that, we know that one times four is four and four divided by four is one. So in reality, all you're doing is really just dividing the leading term that you're distributing. So instead of multiplying by one fourth, technically we're just dividing by four. So if you see it this way, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and you have 1x, and then 12 divided by 4 is 3. So that is an example of distributive property, okay? All right, so examples 2 and 3. So I'm going to do some examples of inequalities uh, while showing you with the distributive property. So first things first, we always take care of the distributive property. So I'm going to have negative 2t, okay, because negative 2 times t. And then negative 2 times negative 3, which is positive 6, and that is less than 2. Again, write your reasoning. This was the distributive property. So I'll make sure you put your reasoning. To the right, great habit. All right, let's work on getting the 
T all by himself, we're going to isolate it. So let's get rid of the plus 6. Now, what is the inverse or opposite of adding 6? Subtracting 6. But what you do to one side, we do to the other. So again, we're seeing the subtraction property again from our properties of equality. We have our negative 2T. The plus 6 and negative 6 cancel out. They eliminate. And 2 minus 6 is negative 4. Now, there's a new rule that you have to see here. If you divide by a negative 2, right, because you have to use the division property to get rid of a multiplying negative 2, this is actually going to happen. We're using the division property, but we're dividing by a negative because we had to get rid of the negative coefficient. Now, when that happens, um, something actually changes with, changes with our inequality symbol. So pay close attention. They like to trick people like this. So we get positive t, negative divided by negative, but the symbol changes. Instead of less than, it changes into greater than because we divided by that negative okay, to both sides. So t will be greater than 2. Now when we're graphing the inequalities on the number line, t is greater than 2. That's our solution. Okay. So when we graph it, we go to 2, and it's greater than 2, but notice how it says not equal to 2. So that's why this point is hollow, okay? But it can be greater. 3 is greater. Oops, sorry, my little touch screen again. Wonderful. There we go. 5 is greater than 2, 4 is greater than 2, everything over to the right going onwards is true. Okay, everything out here is false, um, and here is also false as well. Okay, all right, example number 2, or I'm sorry, this is 3, and this is technically example 2 over here. Sorry, guys. All right, distributive property. Notice that's the first thing I'm going to take care of. 10 divided by 5, that's just 2. 5 divided by 5, that's just 1. Symbol stays the same. And again, this was because of the distributive property. Make sure to mention that, especially if you see it on a test or, you know, even your final or midterm. Okay, let's work on isolating our variable, x. Get rid of the plus 1 by subtraction. Again, subtraction property. Make sure you mention your reasoning, especially on your returns with your group. So these eliminate. We did not touch the 2x, so it stays down. And that is greater than or equal to. And again, I need to learn on why my little pen does that. And 3 minus 1 on the right-hand side is 2. So let's isolate x. Uh, we get rid of a multiplying 2. We divide. So again, division property. Awesome. Notice how we're not dividing by a negative, so the symbol will stay the same. So x is less than or I'm sorry, x is greater than 1. So this, again, is our solution for our inequality. If we were to graph it, okay, it would be at 1, but not at 1. Okay, It doesn't include 1, but everything that's greater than 1 will be true. Okay, So for example, 4 is greater than 1, 3 is greater than 1, 2 is greater than 1, 5 is greater than 1. 1.1111, you know, over here, that's true also. But everything else to the left of 1 is false, and everything that is 1 is false, which is just one value 1, okay? Oh, look at that. Mr. Webb actually made a mistake. Okay, I actually see a lot of freshmen do that, picking up some bad habits. So it's actually x is greater than or equal to. So we actually do fill in our point here. So this actually does change on our graph. I'm very happy I caught that. So we fill it in, we bubble it in, because x can be greater or equal. So that will be true. So make sure you pay attention what the symbol needs to be, all right, all the way down your process. All right, your turn number one. Go ahead and solve this problem. Again, do we need distributive property? What other properties do you need? Work with your group and then graph it on a number line. Your turn number two, same thing. Use the distributive property if you need to. Um, what other properties are you working with? Find your solution and then graph it on the number line.
Same thing as your turn one and two, just uh, solve it. If you need to use certain properties, go ahead, write them out, and then just graph it on the number line. And same instructions as before, but also keep in mind dividing by a negative does what to the symbol? That's my hint. And then of course, graph it on a number line, get your practice. All right, guys, thank you and have a great night. Mathematical.